This is in relation to the cost of living in the Philippines, but it's relative to anywhere else. If you can get a list of somebody's cost of living, you can make a base figure. Um, th this is the important bit. It's a base figure. Um, I do this in auditing. Um, for example, I do productivity depending on where somebody comes from. It varies. People won't say this in, re in the real world, uh, but it's reality. Um, productivity levels are based on nationalities and other bits and pieces, um, but also maintenance on an air conditioning unit. I've got a scale that will tell you how long it will take to maintain it. Now, the first thing somebody will go is, oh, but what if it's got more problems with it? It's based on averages. Um, now, bear in mind, I can put an equation together for a contract worth £80 million based on my data. Um, I would actually say I know what I'm doing. But when you've got something like Philippines, Spain, whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. But what you've got to look at is somebody says the cost of the house is this, cost of groceries is this, cost of this, this, this. Take those figures and put it to one side. List them all down. Now, if you're moving into the same area and you can see their house is a similar standard of living to the way you would live, etc., then it's going to be pretty close. But then if you think, well, I don't really want a two-bedroom house. I just want a one-bedroom and I don't need AC, etc., you can downsize it because obviously your base figure is here and you can reduce the cost. In the same way, you can increase it, because I put in my assessment the use of a motorbike and fuel for a month. Come in at two five, that's a, a monthly instalment of the motorbike plus a thousand for fuel. I have a Pajero four by four in the Philippines, or the what's it? Daihatsu, a Hyundai, it's a Hyundai Galloper 2, um, which is basically the Pajero. They, they use the same parts, etc. It's got a 3 litre turbo diesel engine in it. And my fuel for that comes in at around 3,000 pesos a month. Um, this is why I say my cost of living varies. Um, for example, I didn't put school fees because I based it on two single people, or a couple, um, living together with no kids. I based the figures on what I had experienced myself. I based it on three and a half thousand rent because my first apartment was three and a half thousand rent. And those figures are still the same today. Nothing really changes in the Philippines that much. It's got a high poverty level you know the, the majority of people are not wealthy what you have is this overcompensation thing that goes on though so if you're very poor it doesn't really cost you a lot to live but the richer you are the more it costs like same with electricity electricity the kilowatt rate goes up the more you use so you're compensating for people that are poorer well, or the fact that the Philippines doesn't produce enough electricity, whichever way you look at it, um, your cost goes up. The same as if you buy the big jar of coffee or the big metal tin, do the equation of how much it is per gram and then calculate how much a jar is because the jars are normally cheaper because you can afford more, so you're paying more. That is often the logic in the Philippines. So the base figure will stay the same. And it, this is what I'm saying. When people go, oh, well, I have this, or I don't have, you know. Look, that is the base. You need to go up or under it. You, you, It gives you a starting point. If you get there and find that you're in central Makati and your electricity is three times as much, it's because you're in Makati. Um, in the same way, if you find that the rents are more expensive, it's because you're in a more expensive area. But you will probably find that electricity and everything else is going to be more expensive. Your groceries won't. Groceries are generally the same everywhere. Um, but you can reduce everything. But you need a base figure. That's why I was saying about $450 is the minimum I would want to live. Now, I know Peter Vandervel, whatever his name is, 
he was saying because it, it was his video that actually spurred this on in the first place because he was like oh it'll cost you fifteen thousand to for your hotel but look you're not living if you're using a hotel you're traveling i'm not being funny i don't know any expat that lives in a hotel first three days first month yes while you're looking for your base once you've got your where you know where you're going to live you move in it's not going to cost you fifteen thousand a month plus your bills um and I'll be honest with you, if I'm in a hotel, it's not 700 pesos a night, which is the sort of figure he quotes. It's normally between 1,600, and I think the most we've spent is probably about 3,800 pesos. Um, if I'm in a hotel, I want a hotel. I don't want a room, you know. I want a swimming pool. I want the nice stuff. That's why I pay to get into a hotel. I want a nice, secure compound, armed guards, etc. That's what I want, you know. If I'm paying for going away with a family, I want a little bit of luxury. Um, so, yeah, I would say that's the difference between living and traveling. If you're a tourist, his figures are right. You know, to a point, I wouldn't stop in a 700 pesos hotel unless I was traveling. Um, where I, you know, if it was motorbike trekking, for example, I'm in one town one day into the next it's, you will stop wherever you can stop um but even then you might spike because you'll get somewhere where like cebu at the moment's got synalog so when you arrive there is no hotels free so you have to go further afield and probably pay more end up at the marco polo or something the reality is your figures are going to change and it, this is why i say if you're living living is different to traveling living is this is my house, I have an address, etc, etc. The base figure I recommend as a minimum is about $450, $460. Then, if you've got kids, I didn't have kids for a very specific reason. I've talked about this before. Education in the Philippines is free for the high school, the kids, you know, the kids' school. But even then, there's odd costs. Spain does it in some ways. You know, they'll go, oh, school's free, but you have to pay for lunch, you have to pay for this, you have to pay for that. And you're like, hang on a minute. You know, the, I mean, here in Spain, the cost of school dinners is equivalent of a McDonald's meal every day, which the only reason I put McDonald's meal, because they're expensive in Spain. <laughs> I don't use McDonald's. But the, the actual, how much are we talking it's a lot. It's a lot for kids. Let's put it this way: for their age, you know, because they're very young kids. They they don't really eat that much. Um, so 180 euros a month is a lot of money because uh, you base that on 20 days. What's that? It's about three euros a day per child. Um, how can I put that in perspective? Let's put it this way: we could feed the whole family on 200 euros a month. Um, Okay, they're in a canteen, etc. But this is their schooling environment. It's, canteens should be subsidised or um, giving a good quality of food, etc. And promoting it. Um, I think a lot of people go home for lunch because of the price. Um, but then they go, oh, charge for bus. We don't pay the bus fee because we're within the catchment. But a lot of people have to pay for the bus service. So there's a lot of little hidden things, and I know people go, "Oh yeah, but that's normal." When they there is extra on top of everything. Um, let's just leave it at that. Uh, but the the point being, the point being is the Philippines is the same because even in the free schools, they'll ask for money for polish for polishing the floor. They'll ask for uh, paint for the one who renovate the rooms. They want donations. Da da da. So. It, even on the free ones, it costs you a bit. Nowhere near what we normally pay. Um, now, Ubi and Zoe went to a small school in Minglanilia, uh, in Talise. Um, that school costs 5,000 pesos a month. Now, on top of the education, there's a transportation. Transportation is another 100 pesos a day. So if you take that into account, and we said a thousand pesos for a couple, um, you're already looking at 
two thousand a month just for the kids going to school and back. So this is why I put the kids to one side because there's lots of variables in there that wouldn't fit into a base base figure. In fact, it could make quite a large model if you went, okay, what about this? International schools can cost up to 50,000 pesos a month if you're going for a good one. Um, so there's a lot of you know, school stuff that I'm saying, but as a couple, which is generally what the expats are doing, um, 450 is the absolute minimum. I wouldn't go below it because life can be pretty naff, but also you find that you underspend on this and spend more on something else. So it will work out about 450 um, if you're watching your money. In the same way, if you turn around and decide to buy a TV this month, that'll blow your budget out of the water. But then if you average it out over 18 months, it didn't. It was actually in in the cost because obviously you've you've broken it down to a thousand pesos a month or whatever so there's a lot of variables in there but that's why i say just take the baseline figure that's why i didn't turn around and say right day one when you arrive in the philippines you need 150,000 pesos you need to pay your rent for three months you've got to uh buy buy a tv buy a cooker da, 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 because those are all personal choice but the bits I discussed on the video were baseline. That's that's what's that's a base figure. You work up and down from that. You add your own variables in, but that gives you an idea of what to expect for that sort of money. As such, you can adapt it to your lifestyle. Thanks for watching. Yeah.